What a fantastic bit of countryside here, coastal countryside, northern Cornwall, Davistow village, famous for its cheese making, and this gentleman here, Mark Pitt Tucker, eats cheese for a living, he tells me. Mark, that is incredible. I mean, you're a big, strong lad, but you should be, you know, you should be out there. How much cheese do you eat? In a typical week, we can go through as many as 700 samples of cheese in a week. So that's an, that's an awful lot of cheese and an awful lot of running around to keep it off as yeah, well. I'm sure that's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, the cheese is all made in Cornwall on the beautiful, rugged North Cornish coast. We're Cornwall's single biggest milk user, taking uh, milk from 400 farms. So absolutely great quality milk, fat freezing cows, lush green hills. It's God's country for dairy produce. Some would say it's God's country, period, for golfers and holidays, everything. But what, what makes a good Cornish cheese for you? The quality of the milk is king. You can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. And our, our milk quality is second to none. Also, the artisanal approach that we take to it, a very specific recipe, and we look to highlight the ultimate creaminess with regard to flavour. Depth of flavour, longevity of flavour is absolutely key. You've got a, a few selections for us here. What, can you go through them for us? The, the one on the left is a bit of cheddar, presumably? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, doing a, a talk in a few minutes on the ultimate cheese board for Christmas, and I always start off with some great cheddar. Everyone loves some, some, some cheddar at, at Christmas time, so we've got the three-year-old David Stowe Vintage Reserve, which is great uh, cheese there. Broad appeal, very flinty, very robust. Also got some Cornish Blue, whether it's a Cornish Blue or whether it's Stilton, they always come out at Christmas time. To keep Similar flavour? Very, very much so. The Cornish Blue, if anything, is just a little bit more creamier. Some people find Stilton a little bit too bitey for them, so it's just a little bit more rounded off. Going to the other end, something fresh and bright, the Cornish Yarg cheese, again, keeping the theme going with Cornwall and that. It's a very good palate cleanser, very light cheese. Colour on a cheese board is an absolute must, so it's as visual as well as great tasting. There's, a, there's an extra mature red Leicester that comes from Belton Farms in Shropshire. Great tasting cheese. And finally, getting ever more popular is the fruity style cheese. And everyone, I think, li likes those sweeter flavours. There's some, um, some cheese there that's infused with cranberries for that sweeter flavour as well. So a mixture of colour and flavours. My, my mouth is watering at, this, uh, at just you telling me about all that. Let me ask you this, though. How, uh, it's a, probably a stupid question, but I've got to ask you. Where does the colour come from the Leicester? OK, well, the colour comes from a natural ingredient called a natto that actually comes from South, South America. Years ago, it was actually done through carotene, but actually now we, we add a colouring called a, called, called a natto, and that brings it out. And if you think of double Gloucester cheese that's also coloured but lighter, yeah. it has the same ingredient in but less of. Does it change the flavour significantly? No, there's no effect on right. no effect on flavour at all. If you were to go north of the border to Scotland, they much prefer coloured cheddar to white cheddar, but it's just one more ingredient. And cheddar cheese is simply four ingredients, really. You've got the milk, you've got a bit of starter culture that kick-starts the process, mm -hmm. you've got the rennet that sets the milk off into a junket, and finally you've got the salt that's added as flavour and preservative towards the end of the process. I guess if there's a fifth ingredient, it's TLC. <laughs> Just very quickly as well, I find this fascinating. When, it, when a cheese is said to have been aged for three years, what does that mean in practical terms? Most cheese that you would get on the market that's badged up as mature would typically be nine to ten months of age. So for cheese to go on to three years, it's rather like the equivalent of a 25-year-old whiskey. It's right at the top end of the flavour. It's very difficult to keep the cheese that long. David Stowe is the only producer in the UK that can mature cheese that long, and it's an indication as to the great quality of milk that we've got for that raw ingredient and the skill of the cheese makers down there. I think when it comes to Christmas people are looking for something that's a little more extreme sometimes, big flavour and a real treat. This ticks every box. Absolutely. Brilliant. Absolutely fascinating. Thank you very much indeed, Mark. You're very welcome. Nice now to you see you. Have a good Christmas. You too, indeed. Thank you very much indeed. There you go. You can't be without Christmas, a, a cheese at Christmas. A, a day without cheese is like <laughs> a hug without a squeeze. <laughs>